So it's kind of a rite of passage that if your show has a certain amount of episodes or it's reached a certain amount of seasons, then they eventually have to kind of do a black and white or noir styled episode. Supernatural did it, Smallville did it, Star Trek Voyager did it, and a hundred other shows did it that I just can't remember right now. But I gotta be honest, when I hear this show is about to do one of these kind of episodes, I start to temper my expectations a little bit, mainly because a lot of the time they are kind of just filler episodes or they're just a one-off or they don't really affect what happens on the season. Um, they're, you know, this, they're, they're just kind of there to f do something different with the show and not really kind of attach to any of the ongoing plot points. But Smallville's one was honestly one of my least favorite ways that the show has handled this. And that episode was just so far removed from everything else that was happening during that season of the show. But Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on the other hand is now 100% my favorite show to handle this trope. I'm genuinely amazed at how much I enjoyed what they did this episode. And this is honestly my favorite episode of the season yet. So due to damage to Coulson's LMD hardware that happened at the end of last episode, he now sees everything in black and white and he also has this internal monologue going on. And this was a pretty damn good way to explain what was happening in the episode and to justify doing this kind of episode. Like most shows don't really bother to explain why they're doing this kind of episode and it just happens in the middle of a season or something. And then um, the ones that do kind of have trouble explaining why they're doing it. Like Smallville's justification was that Jimmy Olsen had gotten a head injury and now he was seeing everything in black and white. And... Like, come on, a head injury wouldn't cause that sort of thing, but S.H.I.E.L.D.'s reasoning makes a ton more sense than that did. But outside of that sort of stuff, this episode did fire on all cylinders. Like, putting the stylish noir elements aside, Daniel Souza was a much bigger part of this episode than he was last episode. Like, I liked seeing Daniel Souza back, of course, but last episode I felt like he was a little bit wasted, like they didn't do near as much as they could have with the character. But this time around, he was a pretty integral part of the episode. And we actually did get the full-on reveal that he did in fact know that Hydra is inside S.H.I.E.L.D. and that's why he was killed. He was killed because of Hydra growing inside S.H.I.E.L.D. and he was going to reveal or spread the information that Hydra was inside S.H.I.E.L.D. And he actually became the first fallen S.H.I.E.L.D. agent in history and he was the inspiration for many other S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to come throughout history as well. But the whole Hydra thing that was teased at the end of last episode, and it did have me worrying that we'd see Sousa die for real in this episode, but nope. The character had his death faked and is going to be joining the S.H.I.E.L.D. crew into at least the 1970s. So I know that before this season started, the actor who plays uh, Daniel Suda was confirmed for at least three episodes this season. And I was thinking that, you know, we'd probably see him die then for real this episode since he was only confirmed for three episodes. Or we'd see something like that. But uh, maybe the character will also get off in the 1970s and he'll just have a life. Or maybe they were just covering up for this all along and we'll, he'll actually be around for most of the season, which I really hope that's true. The actor's first Marvel role was actually in 2012's Avengers, and he was a police officer in the Chitauri invasion in New York. So if he does end up staying in the 1970s, it'd be really cool if he ends up having a son who ends up becoming a police officer in New York, which will be a pretty great tie into the movies. Like, it's not something they have to do, but if they want to do something cool like that, that'd be awesome. Um, I think the canon ending for that officer is that he actually dies, though, so that'd be... A little bit upsetting but um we also got a pretty cool pairing up of deke and yo-yo which are two characters who i don't think have ever actually shared a single scene on their own before this episode so that was really interesting and i love when shows kind of mix and match which characters meet up but we also um didn't really get any development on yo-yo's abilities and what the hell is going on there so that'll probably be a pretty big part of next episode if they completely jumped over this episode I did mention in one of my prior videos that so far the only thing I'm finding boring about this season has been both Mei and Yo-Yo's stories of neither character being at 100%. Mainly because for a final season I would kind of liked every character to be at their best or were seeing everyone as the best versions of their characters. Because seeing characters having to struggle with their powers or other things like that is something that I do enjoy seeing in seasons before the final one but not exactly the final one. So on the May front, we did get her answer on what is going on with her, and it's just, it was revealed that she's basically an empath now. And um, so between traveling to the weird monolith world and being thrown in the healing pod, she's gained the ability to feel or sense other people's emotions when she touches them. And out of all the solutions I could have gone for for what's going on with her, this is probably my favorite, or at least the one I like the most. But I still don't understand it too well or why they're choosing to do this, especially in the final season, because it's a pretty big departure from any other storyline we've had with the character. And to give her abilities or powers this late into the game feels a little odd. Now, maybe they did this because they're going to need her to use those powers later on in the season. Maybe there's something that's coming up later on and they kind of realize that, well, a way we could get out of this solution would be to have May have powers. So they gave her powers at the start of the season. Which, if that's the case, then cool. Great. I'm glad it has a use. 
but if not, this might be one aspect of the season that I look back on and consider wasted screen time, or at least underwhelming. I, I have a feeling this is something like they realized when they were writing the season that they didn't have an awful lot for Mingna or for just the character of May to do, so they decided to add in a whole new plot point just for her, because it, so far it does feel pretty far removed from everything else that's going on. But we did get to see Freddy or Wilfred Malik again, and we sort of got the reveal that he's involved with S.H.I.E.L.D. This whole part of the episode was great, and the whole um, scene with him and Deke was probably one of my favourite scenes of the episode. But I'm a little confused on the specifics of Malik inside S.H.I.E.L.D., and maybe I just misunderstood what they said. But were they implying that Malik is currently a director of S.H.I.E.L.D., or at least someone in the government who oversees S.H.I.E.L.D., or something like that? Because Sousa says that Malik is his superior, so either way it feels like Malik was maybe the first American Hydra member to start growing inside S.H.I.E.L.D. or to start the infiltration inside S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, because I'm fairly certain that Agent Carter and Captain America the Winter Soldier kind of say that Arnim Zola is the first Hydra member to start the infiltration. So we know that it doesn't start with Malik, it starts way further back than that. But one thing that was an interesting choice was the fact that they chose a new actor to betray Freddy in this episode rather than you reuse Darren Barrett from episodes 1 and 2, especially since only 20 years have passed. So most shows would have just gotten back the other actor and they would have stuck them in some aging makeup and I would have been fine with that but I'm actually a huge fan of what they decided to do mainly because they're kind of showing us that Freddy here could not be further than Freddy in the 30s and the last 20 years inside Hydra have kind of changed him and made him a much higher person up the food chain than he was they're also kind of teasing us that Malik and Hydra as a whole are going to be pretty important for the rest of the season as they'll be working with the Chromicons and I'm pretty hyped to see where they go with this. And I'm wondering if this will actually leave the door open for more people that we know who are inside Hydra that, we sh that could possibly show up soon. We also got the reappearance of Enoch and why do the team treat him so badly? I just don't get it. Like Fitz tre treated Enoch like absolute dirt last season and he just he needs to get the love and appreciation he deserves. But speaking of Fitz, we still have nothing on that front. And we're officially at the point where this is the longest it's taken him to show up in a season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because the ending of Season 5, Episode 4 was his first appearance that season. So I was kind of hoping that maybe we'd have him show up at the end of this episode to line up with when he showed up in Season 5. But uh, yeah, there was also a rumor going around before the season started that Ian was only going to be in two episodes this season. And on the poster for this season, while everyone is wearing time period clothes, he's just in a regular shirt like he always wears. Now... A lot of people try to justify this by saying that it could be a 1950s shirt in the poster and that he would actually show up last episode or this episode. But I never really thought it looked like a 1950s shirt. I always did just think it looked like he was in normal clothes. And at the start of the season, I also thought that there was no way that two episodes rumor would be true. But the deeper we get into the season, the more worried I'm getting that, yeah, he's not going to be in much this season at all. Um, I might do a video talking about where Fitz is and all that sort of stuff. But there's also next to no information on him so far, so we'll see. Either way, I'm, I'm I'm missing the character a bunch. But yeah, this was a fantastic episode. Best episode of the season yet, in my opinion. And so far, this has been a more than solid beginning to the final season. They've set up a lot of interesting places to go. What do you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and all of that. And I hope you're having an awesome day.